Welcome to the Fit Media Network, the channel dedicated to healthy living and fitness. We speak with coaches, doctors, athletes, and more about their routines to help you feel, look, and perform at your best. Hey everybody, what's up? This is Mike with the Fit Media Network. I'm really excited to introduce you to our guest for today. His name is Dr. Michael Petrie. Uh, I've known Dr. Petrie since I was about 14 years old. He was the first sponsor I had when I started racing bicycles. And he came to me for hair growth. Yeah, it didn't work. I thought Dr. Petrie would be a really good person to speak with you guys about healthy living and different things that you may be able to do to increase the quality of your life. So without any more delays, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Petrie. This afternoon, Mike. Thanks so much for being on the show. Fantastic. Glad to be here. So you have your own practice. What do you, how long have you been in business? 39 years. 39 years. Yeah. Have you been in the same Depends location? Depends on when they watch this video. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, today is, is I, we February started 13? in 1979. Oh, wow. So yeah. now we'll go back from there. Then we'll just add it up and you do the math. There you go. And, and, and what got you into this kind of business? Uh, my mother. She had a couple of injuries and chiropractic helped her a lot. And uh, over the years, the practice has evolved. We've added physical therapy, medical doctor, uh, massage therapist, and uh, right now we have a staff of about 12 people. Where, are you, where exactly are you located? 410 Northeast 44th Street, which is Prospect Road, Fort Lauderdale. So if you're in East Fort Lauderdale, definitely come out and, and visit Dr. Petrie and, and his office. They've it's called the Spine and Joint oh. Center now. It used to be called Petrie Chiropractic, but uh, we, since we brought in multiple disciplinary doctors and other therapists, and we changed it around. Spine and Joint kind of identifies us pretty well. Okay. All right. Good. Do you have any specific type of treatment that you enjoy doing more than anything else? Well, I'm a chiropractor and I also do acupuncture. Um, I'm sold on chiropractic absolutely and positively. I do some acupuncture and patients have certain requests and we also have uh, therapy adjunctives in addition to what we do. So, okay. um, you know, we kind of had the spectrum. You got to figure out what works with what patient because there's multiple treatments for almost every single problem, whether it's a rotator cuff or neck problem, or lower back problem, uh, you know, knee joint, meniscus. Uh, now, which treatment is going to be effective? And sometimes you kind of have to start with one treatment, measure, observe the results, and then figure out if we need to move on to something, something else. else. My job, number one, is help them avoid surgery. Yeah, well, we, we talked about that last week with, with one of our guests. You know, a lot of times, uh, traditional type of medicine, the, they are taught the methods of surgery and pills. And that's the way that they know to treat. Most people, myself included, if I can avoid getting cut open, I try to. Um, had a few surgeries, and, and you know, we all obviously want to do something a little bit less invasive, less uncomfortable. Well, is there a nice, natural, safe therapy first? Okay, try that, work with it, get things going. And then obviously there's medications that can control pain or help with pain, inflammation. Everybody thinks inflammatory, oh, take an anti-inflammatory. Well, inflammation is part of the healing process. So too many people jump at drugs and medications that interfere with the life processes of healing and stability and uh, compensation that the body does to overcome an injury. And then they end up tearing it up, worsen it, and then they end up talking to the surgeons. You mentioned inflammation. And that's a, a really, that's a key word. Mm -hmm. that we hear oh, you everybody hear talking endlessly about. And everybody thinks it's bad, bad, bad. Well, there's erroneous infl inflammation, uh, but there's really the initial response to any injury is inflammation, and that should not be stopped. Uh, you know, that, uh, everybody That's your says, body's reaction. take anti-inflammatories. Why? Inflammation is given to the body as part of the healing process and mechanisms. When inflammation kind of continues on and it's just going on endlessly, especially with chronic situations, that's when we really got to get involved with stopping inflammation. Is there something that... I, you guys don't know Dr. Petrie uh, yet, but one of the things that I really like about him is, um, is his approach to a, a healthy diet and what you put into your body. And from your 
experience, do you find that there's any specific foods or p things that people can be doing to help reduce inflammation naturally or have the least amount of discomfort from inflammation? Well, it's a lifestyle choice. I became a vegan. And it's gradual because I think every year we should try to be better than we were last year. You know, a couple of years ago I was a vegetarian. A few years before that I just ate meat and potatoes like everybody else. And that's the way I grew up. And right now I'm 62 and I'm feeling very healthy and active and energetic. And I think I can keep you're, up with anybody. You're, your eyes are watering and it's I, making my eyes water. I'm sorry We're not about crying that on I'm camera. Just, uh, my tear ducts are kind of small and whenever <laughs> I like, try to keep my eyes open and smile, I tend to overproduce uh, tears, but it's not a big deal. I have sympathy or empathy, oh, okay. uh, empathy, empathy tears. Eyes. So, um, yes, I do that we're, occasionally. we're not getting emotional about having a conversation about anti inflammatories. Yeah. But, so, uh, as anyway, a, you know, involved now, all of a sudden, become a vegan is like, well, are raw foods better? Are you know, should we be gluten free? Should we be uh, looking at all these things? And yes, I think we need to look at them. And our information, our knowledge, actually expands and improves every year. So I continue to try to keep up to rest with things. I go to lectures. I go for license renewal credits that I have to do. But I also go to a lot of lectures, and I, literally, I go on YouTube. And the hardest part is. Who do you trust when you're watching Deciphering the truth from... Yeah. I like Dr. Michael Greger's videos, uh, nutritionfacts.org. Nutritionfacts.org? Is, um, is that one of the YouTube channels? It's a YouTube channel, yeah. And I put subscribe, and about twice a week they say, hey, we got a new video out, and you want to learn about it. And it we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. This way you guys can take a look at the... Highly at the recommend it. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of good too, you know, videos and they'll always throw something else at you. And I kind of watch those other ones by other sources. And he's very well quoting medical literature and double-blind placebo-controlled studies versus just studies when they say, wow, three people tried it, it's great. So they got a lot, a, a lot more information backing up what they're saying. Yeah, so it, you know, it appears to be a truth. And then you get some, some contrary information and you have to decipher where does that fit in. For years they thought that maybe a little bit of alcohol was better than no alcohol. Yeah, and I like a, a little bit of alcohol. It, it was a J-curve. They thought that a little bit you seemed to be healthier than if you had zero. And then if you drank more and more and more, your health or your disease things went up, your health went down. And in reality, they found out it was zero because some of those people they measured as zero were alcoholics that had to give up alcohol for health purposes. Mm -hmm. But they asked them, do you drink? No, none at all. They were mm -hmm. also measured in after years of abuse to their body. And that's why the, the it's a straight curve. It's not a J curve that starts, goes downhill, and then goes on up. It goes all the way down to zero. The healthiest you can be would be zero alcohol. But, you know, I got so to admit, I'm, so you find I'm, that? I'm not perfect. I'm not pure in my uh, ways and means of life. But I do try to improve every year, and less is better. Yeah, no, well, that's interesting, too. We, uh, we haven't gotten into discussion on alcohol yet, but I think that's something that, that is really good. Well, just remember um, the J-curve, and we'll look that up on research, and you'll find it. It's pretty interesting. Any resources that, that you could recommend to look that up? Uh, that one was that literally on from nutritionfacts.org, okay. and uh, that's the more latest research. Again, they, they thought that one or two drinks would actually help you. You know, have your little wine and the antioxidants in the wine, etc. Well, it turns out that zero was better than one or two wines a night. But there's this minimal damages, more damages, more damages, and more damages the more and more and more you drink. So, so it's relative careful. to how much you're consuming, you would it, say. It is pretty much a linear curve to how much you're consuming. And if you're drinking 10 drinks a night, you're not going to be nearly as healthy as the person is drinking one drink a night or zero. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, too. And um, you've always been a pretty fit guy. Yeah, that's how we met. <laughs> it is. It is. And, and my first track bike actually had your name on it. If I can dig up the photo, I do have a photo somewhere yeah. of me racing at I 16 it on your at bike. I a bicycle store used, and I think the guy put my name on it just to try to get me to buy it. But <laughs> it actually, there was a Petrie racing bicycle company. I don't know if it's Italian or whatever, and that's the name on the frame, and of course I had to buy it. <laughs> I thought you just had it painted or decaled or whatever with, with your information. Bought it that way. So, um, at, at this point, what kind oh, of... not to mention, my first name is Michael, and it was an M. Petrie. 
Oh, it was gray. I remember it was a gray yeah, frame and yeah. the yellow lettering on it. I still have it. It's it got a lot of use. A, it's hanging up in a garage and it had a lot of wins on that bicycle thanks to this guy right here. Okay. <laughs> one I put the, one or two wins on it, but this guy put, I don't know, 20 or 30 wins? A few. Yeah, yeah. I did some and, and there's been other. Especially in juniors. You you know, you were hot, hot banana in juniors. <laughs> and now I'm old. Now I'm and Now you're doing masters. really good in masters. <laughs> You know, one of the, the awesome things that uh, that I can say also about Dr. Petrie was he helped out a lot of the juniors. That team that uh, yeah. that I was racing on when I first started, it was there were a lot of kids, and you supported the team. The team actually had your name on the purple and, and green kits. I've always felt that local athletes, no matter how good they are, are contributing to the Olympic and the world titles and finals that the Americans get. I mean, we get more... Olympic gold medals than other countries in most sports and you even if you're not making the Olympics you're making the other guy work harder to beat you yeah therefore why did we get these gold medals because of this guy right here <laughs> people that have just I can't take credit he had to for work that. harder than I did to beat me <laughs> and then other people had to work harder than him to beat him so well I think that's Oh, you kind of a lesson. against guys like Carl and things. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, he had, he's motivated because he doesn't want to lose to you. That's true. That's true. And actually, this is kind of a, a, another lesson in, in terms of training and fitness, which is coming down to competing against people that are better than you, but also competing against people that might not be as good as you because it keeps you on your game. You know, every dog has his day. And sooner or later, you're going to be not taking somebody seriously who you're competing against then they're gonna sneak one by you and that it, it will keep you on your toes and it teaches you to respect all competitors yeah. and everybody that you're competing with because like I said every dog has his day so uh, I absolutely believe in that and uh, it's not just about winning but it's also about trying to improve and mm -hmm. being better than you were so have some measurements out there and work for that and I, like little kids in baseball I think the first thing they ought to do is have them throw the ball as far as they can and measure it yeah. and have them run around all the bases one time or to first base and see how long it takes and then at the end of next season do it or the beginning of next season do it and all of a sudden the kids will see their improvement and they'll also have a goal wow that kid can throw, throw the ball 180 feet I got I can only throw it 105 feet well, sure now he has something measurable to work against Versus, well, you know, he just throws it harder, or faster. He just doesn't know. It's a random, um, it's a random measurement versus something that's quantifiable. Yeah. Quantifiable, measurable, and uh, it's a goal. You know? So and there's goals an expression are very good for bodies and health and life. I can't. I, I don't remember who whose expression this was. I, I'll do my best to to find it. But they say that which is measurable can be improved, and it's really, really important in anything that, that might do. be Einstein you never know it could it, be you know, we're thinking it might be an athlete but it also might be Einstein it might have been a doctor but I well, anyway we'll, we're gonna figure that out and I'll, and I'll put that into the show notes maybe but... we can do a timeout right now google it and we'll come back and then <laughs> back up 10 seconds edit that portion out and we'll look like geniuses there you go that's a really good idea yeah. we need to do something like that <laughs> <laughs> Restore Labs is one of the sponsors of the show and and um, one of the things that I, I try to do when speaking with somebody who I would consider to be an expert is drop off some samples. And uh, Dr. Petrie got a chance to, uh, to give some samples of the Restore Labs lotion to uh, a massage therapist in the office. Well, that was the, I was just telling you ahead of time, he asked me, well, how'd you like the product? Did you find the results? Well, we get a product and fortunately I don't have any serious aches and pains so I can't measure it myself. So I have to take the word of who else, my patients. So I gave it to my therapist. I said, use this on a few patients, see what you think about it, and let me know because, you know, hey, I don't want to, A, continue to use a product I don't like or believe in, and B, we have other products that we have used in the past, so it's like stick with the old stuff or try something new. So uh, good news is we actually had immediate response. Good. And measurable, immediate response, and when I say measurable, we didn't have a number system, but, you know, when you put it on a patient, and they kind of like, before they even leave the office, say, you know what, I think that feels better. That was different, the results, than we were getting from other stuff. Yeah. And uh, so I like it when the patient can walk out saying, I think that stuff really works. I feel better. Yeah, well, that's why, part of why you're doing this, right? You want to yeah. make people feel better. Well, apparently there's a transdermal absorption of the things, and it mediates some sort of response and calms down pain. I looked at the... It, 
when I say chemicals, I looked at the ingredients to it and I feel very comfortable. It's all healthy, good stuff and it's, I don't have to worry about allergens and things like that with patients so, so far. We've been great with it and uh, you know, I'm sure somebody somewhere along the line will think something happened but by gosh it seems to be absorbing clean, pretty pure, nutritional basically. Nutrition for the skin, it also has an effect underneath into the muscles and tissues.